This is the second part in five different videos talking about how to do phylogenetic reconstruction. In this part, we're going to discuss the method of parsimony. So when we produce a phylogenetic tree, there are two steps to getting a tree. The first step is to make the shortest possible unrooted tree. Um, and when we say shortest, what we mean is the tree that requires the fewest number of evolutionary changes, which we sometimes refer to as steps. So let me uh, explain to you now what I mean by an unrooted tree, because so far we've really only talked about rooted trees. So I'm going to draw a very simple rooted tree here with three species. And a rooted tree has the time dimension in it, as we talked about in that last video. And when we make an unrooted tree, what we're going to do is we're going to take the time dimension out of the tree. And the way that we do that is fairly straightforward. What we do is we get rid of the root of the tree. As soon as we get rid of the root of the tree, we get rid of the time dimension. And the way to do that is very simple. What we're going to do then, let's get rid of this part of the tree, is we're going to take these two branches that come off the root here and here, and we're going to turn them into a single branch. Okay, so imagine grabbing the two branches that I just drew arrows to and straightening that out into a single branch, and that will produce our unrooted tree. So, for example, on this one, our unrooted tree is going to look like this A, B, C. Because what we did was we straightened out these two branches here that we just talked about and turned them into this single branch here. And so we end up with an unrooted tree that has no time dimension on it. So whenever you want to make an unrooted tree, simply go straight to the root, straighten out the two uh, branches that come off of the root, and you'll have an unrooted tree. All right, so we're going to try to make the shortest possible unrooted tree. And the way that we do this is we try all the combinations of unrooted trees uh, with all possible combinations of species. And this can get really big really fast. You should see my um, uh, bonus video if you want to see why things grow so quickly. And basically what we're going to do is we'll go to each tree and we'll count the number of steps or evolutionary changes on it. And whichever one of those trees has the fewest number of steps or changes on it becomes the most parsimonious tree. And that's the one that we choose. Okay. Now, what exactly do I mean by picking the shortest possible tree? Well, let's go ahead and just look at a very simple case of four taxa, four species. There are three unique four taxon trees. I'm going to draw them for you right now. Okay, now at your leisure, you can uh, determine for yourself that there aren't any other ways to do, four, uh, to do a four taxon unrooted tree than what we see here. These three examples are the only ways that you can do it. And so the idea here is to go through and say, well, how many evolutionary changes would there be if I worked with this topology? How many evolutionary changes would there be if I worked with this topology? Or how many evolutionary changes would there be if I worked with this topology? So I'm just going to make up something here. We'll go through the details of this uh, later on. But let's just imagine that we go through this and we decide, OK, I, this requires three changes. And I'm representing each change with a hash mark. And I'm showing where the change occurs, what branch it occurs on, by drawing those hash marks. So let's just, for the sake of argument, assume that we need three changes to get this topology. And let's say for the same data set, we only need two changes to get that topology. And let's say for this, we only needed one change to get that topology. Then, because these are the three possible unrooted trees, 
And this one here only requires one evolutionary change or one step. This is the most parsimonious tree for the data set that we had for these four taxa. And so this would become the most parsimonious tree, and that would be the one that we work with.